Welcome to another Swigging Steve's Barking Beer Reviews. This is review number 128, I believe. 128, which on the grand scheme of things, in comparison to other beer reviews, in a lot, but yeah, I suppose it's quite a lot to me. I don't know. I'd like to do a lot more than I get round to, and I'm hopefully going to start doing that eventually. I don't do the intros anymore, which is helping, because obviously editing out computer and everything else takes a lot of time. So I just bunk, I just basically upload it from my phone now. Um, which does help. So anyway, we're going to go to something here a little bit more sort of quintessentially British, I suppose. Something that maybe epitomises British brewing. And this one is Hen's Tooth. Okay, there we go. It's got a lovely nice chestnut colour to it. And what I mean by about epitomising, well, it's brewed in Bury St Edmunds, like, like most beers are these days that are brewed in Britain. Um, although it's a moorland brewery, or it's a moorland recipe, it is brewed by Green King. 6.5%. Uh, and I think, yeah, yeah, bottle conditioned. See all those bits at the bottom? So all that that looks like mould at the bottom of your bottle, which looks a little bit off-putting, is actually yeast. And that means that this beer has not been pumped through a... pumped with C, um, CO2 or carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. It's naturally carbonated, which means um, a byproduct of yeast being in the bottle uh, is because the yeast eats the sugar or something, I think it's the sugar into it in the beer. And a byproduct of that is carbon dioxide, which naturally carbonates the beer, so it's not pumped full, full of gas basically. It's naturally carbonated. It has a massive effect on that. Some of you are thinking, well, 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 I'm thinking, why am I saying this now? Because there's some people on this channel that are like, yeah, we know that. We don't need to know that. There's some people that are new. That have never that don't aren't aware of that. Some people that look at that and think, "Oh my God, what is that at the bottom of my bottle?" Um, it's it's perfectly fine. But in this day and age, a lot of the craft beers are can conditioned, so they're all naturally carbon carbonated as well. Um, but the traditional real ales, which once upon a time lots and lots were were bottle conditioned, this one in particular has always been one of those that's always been bottle conditioned. Most of the bottled bottle beers were, and then it stopped. And maybe it stopped because it, it became unfashionable, or it maybe put people off seeing that at the bottom of your glass, or the bottom of your bottle. Who knows? But um, anyway, I, I, I am going on a little bit here. So hen's tooth, it's meant to be... Rep basically, the idea is that a hen's tooth is really rare. You know, you don't see many hens walking around with teeth, do you? And quite a funny concept that a hen running around with like a big tooth sticking out. No. Might be a good concept for a, a weird like B, B, B movie horror on Netflix or something. A hen with a tooth. Uh, John Carpenter there. Uh, quite a few notes on that one. Uh, <laughs> but hen's tooth, yeah. Uh, so it's, it's meant to be representing the fact that the idea is rare. So this beer is quite rare. So the recipe is quite very rare. Um, the taste flavour is rare, unique. So yeah, bottle condition. I'm, I'm going to start drinking it because I feel like I'm waffling on. I feel like... Um, oh, lovely, lovely, first of all. Caramel nuttiness to it. Which is very typical of a good quality Green King beer, shall we say. Yeah, really, almost like, almost toffee. Let's pour some into the glass, shall we? That's quite lively. Mmm, oh, it's got a lovely smell. That, that smells lovely. That smells like it used to. This is a kind of beer that you used to have at Christmas, so it's been quite a strong beer. And being bottle conditioned, it always sounded like it were a little bit more special. So we'd save it for like a yeah, because you're getting a real caramelly, nutty, almost like a hazelnut quality from this beer. Brown sugar, that sort of thing. Almost like candied sugar sort of smell. Um, slight earthiness from an earthy hop in there. Biscuitiness. Baked bread. Slightly turned apples, just a little bit. Mmm, smells very inviting. 
British, 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 British. But almost got a hint of like that sort of <coughs> candied sugar that you might get from a Belgian beer or a, some sort of continental beer. I don't know, anyway. Mmm. Cheers. Mm. Sickly. <sighs> Full bodied. It's got quite a body, good, decent body to it, this. It's almost like drinking a, a, a stout. It's almost like it's got lactose in it, actually. And the flavour, you're getting a very nice, bready, a caramelly, bready, smooth, almost milky quality to the beer actually. But you're hit by this alcohol, which is quite obvious in there. But also comes in with the slight bitterness of the slightly citrusy, earthy British hop. Slight dry finish, but there is a lingering bitterness on, on the back of your tongue. So there is, there is a hot present in that hot presence, should I say? Obviously, there's hot presence because it's got it's a beer, so it's got hops in it. But for something that I thought might be more, maybe more malt forward, and it is malt forward. There is a hot presence there at the back. Lovely lacing, lovely, lovely lacing on the glass, lovely oils. But you're getting that almost like a an artificial nut quality to it. It's not. I know it's not, but almost like a I'm trying to think of something that I've had that's quite nutty, that's been a not Nutella, I don't know, something like I don't know, I can't think of anything. It's almost like a got a, like a syrupiness to it, I suppose, like a syrup quality. <sighs> it's one of them you can quite happily sit while watching something on box. Watching, uh, <laughs> I'm watching uh, on Netflix at the moment, I'm watching, uh, what's it called now? That something versus Resident uh, Evil Dead, that new Evil Dead thing. What was it? What's his name now? I can't remember the name of the character in it. Yeah, I'm knackered today, that's why I'm waffling, I think. What's his name now? The main character in it. Is it like Ed versus Evil Dead or something like that? Really good series anyway, watch it. And Ash. Ash, that's it. Ash versus Evil Dead. So it's like a... Uh, if, uh, if you've watched the original Evil Dead films, you'll understand the story so far. And basically, it, it, it follows that. And he's like an older man. He's still only got one hand. Living in a camper van. Um, and he decides he's gonna get drunk one night and summons. He's still got. He's still walking around with bucket dead for some reason. You'd think you'd just bury it bucket dead, wouldn't you, and get rid of it? But he's walking around with bucket dead, dead still in his, in his mo, in his uh, mobile home. Uh, and then he gets drunk with a lady one night and uh, decides he's gonna summon some devils and then, or some summon dead spirits or whatever it is. It doesn't book. So yeah, it's really funny. Anyway, my digress. Yeah, it's good talking to you guys. I'm not, I've not spoke to people for a while, so. Had a good gulp there. Dried fruit. Almost like a dried dried prune in there, maybe. But a fruit cakiness to this beer as well. Slight cherry. Cherryness. Sort of in there. Let's read the bottle, shall we? There's nothing on it. Oh, price by the way, this came in at my cost cutter at um, Shafton. £1.25 per 500ml bottle. And it's within date still. This obviously is intended to be sold abroad because it's all in other languages. Moreland. 
bottle a fine, specially brewed strong ale, conditioned in big writing, which finishes fermenting in the bottle. Strong ale, in the words of our head brewer, a combination of flavour and character that is as rare as a hen's tooth. Sorry to say, but it's not a rare flavour. Maybe when the beer was originally brewed, yes, <laughs> but since then, no, it ain't. It, Tell you what though, it does got like a really nice like body to it. It's kind of smooth, a bit lactose. It's got like that caramelly nuttiness. Mm. Slightly almond, but like a fruit cake, a boozy fruit cake, a boozy fruit cake. Yeah, slightly dried dried fruit maybe on the backbone. It's got a dry bitterness which makes you want more, which makes you come in for more because I, th I think if it's quite a sick, it's it's not quite a sickly beer. If they didn't have that dry hop, slightly dry, slightly dry, not really dry, but dry hop finish, I think you'd take a sip and go, nice. Then you'd take a few more and go, I've had enough now. But because it's got that, it's still got that beer hoppy quality to it. It carries the beer really well. Mm. Okay. What would I give this beer? One pound twenty five a bottle. I had a craft beer can the other day, three quid. 440 mils. On the flavour, it tastes nothing like that beer, but it's probably got the same drinkability as that beer did. I think I gave that a 7.9. This is only £1.25 a bottle, so I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It's an 8 out of 10 for me, this. It's good quality, quintessentially British beer. If anybody overseas is wanting to know what a good quintessential, put your feet up by the fire beer tastes like, this is the one. <laughs> You know, if you want to tell Christmas ghost stories in front of the fire, um, while drinking a, well, while, while drinking this, then you're certainly um, putting yourself in uh, quintessentially British household over the Christmas period. Although people don't really read Christmas ghost stories to each other anymore, so that's probably not so true. But there we go. Times move on, don't they? We don't live in the Edwardian times anymore, do we? <laughs> anyway, 8 out of 10 for me. Till next time, keep safe. Keep drinking safely. Um, stay out of trouble. Uh, and we'll see you next time.